Folks, we're joined in this briefing by uh, someone who will be doing signing. Clearly, we want to make sure that everybody is getting the best information uh, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So we thank uh, our signer. Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, circumstances are very grim out there on the streets of Ipswich and Brisbane. We are now in the grip of a very serious natural disaster, uh, and you've all seen the images on your TV screens uh, we are now seeing thousands of homes inundated with water up to the roof, uh, many, many more expecting to see significant water damage. Up to 1,000 homes in Ipswich are inundated and 7,500 properties affected by water. Brisbane has had a slight reprieve uh, with the peak tomorrow expected slightly lower, but nevertheless an event that is going to devastate uh, the city with some uh, anywhere between 20 and 30,000 people affected. Chinchilla has seen the waters peak this evening. Uh, that means uh, that people can now start the heartbreaking business again of waiting for the waters to go down in Chinchilla. Uh, I can confirm that uh, we remain at a death toll of uh, 12. Uh, however, we have seen the number of people unaccounted for drop further to 43. We have some four, just over 4,000 people who are in evacuation centres, but uh, that number is rising. There are three uh, large objects or vessels in the Brisbane River that have been occupying emergency authorities tonight, and I'll just go through each of them. Firstly, the Mogul Ferry. The Mogul Ferry uh, has broken one of its guide ropes and, and is therefore we've been looking at how to secure it to prevent it from uh, floating down the river and becoming a dangerous object, uh, bumping into bridges and causing damage. A 1.5 tonne uh, anchor uh, will be used to secure the ferry. That will need to be taken in by helicopter and that will be done at first light tomorrow morning. Currently, uh, it is currently secure and the uh, master of the vessel is with the vessel and will remain in it overnight. We, hold, uh, we believe that this uh, vessel is secure and holds no immediate further fears overnight and the anchor will be taken by helicopter out to secure that vessel uh, early tomorrow morning. Uh, the next uh, issue that authorities have been dealing with is uh, the barge or the boat known as the island. We are still doing a final assessment of whether the best uh, option here is to secure uh, this in some way or to scuttle or sink the vessel. This, uh, this barge is at high risk of coming off its mooring, so we are looking at a number of options to either secure or sink it. Uh, at about 10.30 tonight, a team of naval clearance divers uh, will arrive from Sydney and they are being flown in to provide uh, capability to the emergency authorities here to assist in the event that the decision is made to scuttle or sink the vessel. This could occur overnight. Decisions will be made a little later this evening. The third uh, issue is the fate of the floating walkway uh, around the New Farm stretch of the river. This floating walkway may look like a, a light uh, piece of infrastructure. It is in fact a very heavy uh, concrete object and it is at serious risk of coming, becoming dislodged and tearing down the river. The, decision, the current plan is for the floating walkway to be broken up into sections and for those sections to be disposed of. Uh, we expect that people will be working through the night in that effort. Uh, so there are a number of areas uh, this evening where we have uh, emergency authorities working on uh, quite difficult uh, logistic exercises and where potentially quite high risk, uh, pro uh, pro quite high risk uh, efforts will be made overnight. I think that gives you a taste of some of the things that our emergency authorities are grappling with. They are not only out there door knocking and out in rescue and uh, flood boats uh, getting people to safety, uh, not only are they setting up emergency evacuation centres, uh, but we are grappling with some, uh, any one of those issues uh, on any, in any other circumstances would uh, require an incredible strategic effort. We've now got three of them at once in the context of a whole range of other logistical uh, dilemmas. So uh, this will be a, a pretty big night for our emergency authorities. We are expecting to see the peak of the Brisbane River at 4am tomorrow morning. So we do expect that many people will find water coming into their streets tonight. Uh, anybody, 
anybody who has slightest concern that you might be anywhere near rising water, please leave your homes. Now is the time for you to be doing that. If you've been a, a little complacent earlier today, there's no more room for that. Please make the safe decision. Uh, I'm not sure, Commissioner, if you had anything you wanted to add. Uh, Premier, I think you've comprehensively uh, canvassed all the issues. In Sorry, I should... The, in terms of the 43 people that are missing, that, that number's sort of gone up and down mm. uh, with each briefing. Mm. Is that the final number, or you know, do you know mm. if, uh, if you, yeah. where these people are? Uh, no, these people are still unaccounted for. What's happened here is that we've had an extreme event through the Lockyer Valley and people who were unable to find or contact loved ones or neighbours did the right thing and notified them as missing. As we've had police go into those towns, uh, we've been able to locate people. Those people have been in their homes and safe but perhaps uncontactable by mobile phone and people have very legitimately been worried about them. So we've been able to cross them off the list but we still have, despite those efforts, 43 people who have not been accounted for. Uh, we continue to hold very grave concerns about a number of them and continue to be uh, uh, quite despondent that uh, we will find all of them alive. So uh, our emergency teams are out there doing search and rescue. We, they're in very tough terrain. Uh, there's been an extraordinary event there. So it may take uh, another 24 or 48 hours before they are able to locate some of uh, the people that we're looking for. Could I, could I expand on that? Because just uh, to endorse that and, and perhaps further describe that, uh, Murphy's Creek is a very hilly, if not mountainous area, um, very difficult to access. Um, the Grantham, as we know, is uh, some of the houses have been literally exploded and destroyed by the force of the water. Uh, and we believe that some of the people aren't in the houses or the wreckage of the houses have actually been swept away. So, as the Premier indicated, uh, this is going to take days and days to complete this search properly and thoroughly. And just in terms of uh, evacuations in and around Brisbane, is there any suggestion that you might have to force people out of their homes? Uh, the, legally, uh, it can be compulsory, compulsory to evacuate. Uh, I think it shows the character of the Queensland community that we have not had on any occasion, despite this being Queensland-wide, to forcibly, physically, forcibly evacuate anyone. Oh, and we did that... have one in Ipswich last night. Oh, I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry we, to we contradict did. you, Commissioner, but yeah. I'd already given that information uh, out. No, that's right. He was armed with a <laughs> firearm, I believe. Uh, it was quite difficult. So up until that incident last night, everyone has been able to negotiate with our people. And whilst they're not happy, some of them, they've left. Uh, that's the way we'd like it to continue. So I think that speaks volumes. That's one one case How where you about reports of looting. Very, yeah, very, very concerned about reports. Very concerned about people's fear about that, and very concerned about uh, that actually happening. Uh, and we will do all we can to prevent that. Um, in terms of obviously encouraging people to report any concerns they have to Crime Stoppers, 1800 333 000, any concerns at all, and when it's appropriate and when we can, because we can't do it now, uh, put patrols into place uh, to deter people from doing that. Premier, uh, Brisbane will go to sleep tonight and probably wake up tomorrow morning seeing something they've never seen before. What should they brace themselves for? Brisbane will go to sleep tonight uh, and wake up to scenes that they have, uh, many of them, never seen anything like in their lives. I've spent time in a, uh, in a helicopter this afternoon uh, surveying particularly the Ipswich area. People need to brace themselves for the fact that uh, they will see images on their television of neighbourhoods that are very well known to them, potentially uh, things that, places they love, the local school, uh, their local park, parts of their neighbourhoods, their communities, their friends, uh, affected and uh, flooded completely out. There are some parts of Brisbane and Ipswich which already are completely unrecognisable. There are parts, particularly around Goodner and Gales, uh, which just look like a large inland lake. Uh, in fact, parts of it seem to have disappeared uh, you know, visually. So uh, we will wake tomorrow to an image of Brisbane, uh, to pictures around our city, our neighbourhoods, our schools. Uh, that will shock many of us, and I do, do say to everybody we need to be ready for that. But I think we will also wake to find people out there helping each other. We will find very quickly that people will be in each other's homes giving a hand and lending uh, support wherever they can. I think we're going to see some extraordinary, uh, some extraordinary solidarity overnight in our evacuation centres and I think that we are going to wake up 
to a shocking and remarkable challenge. Uh, but I sense out there with the people and the reports I'm getting that this is a challenge we are up to, a challenge that we will meet. Uh, in the meantime, we all have an anxious night ahead of us. Uh, our emergency people are out there on the front line. They'll be there all night. We've had an additional 200 personnel join us from other states and from New Zealand in the last uh, just over 24 hours. So we have, we've had uh, additional resources. We have uh, additional facil uh, equipment such as helicopters. Uh, we are doing everything that is humanly possible to protect our city. Just a practical question. If you do scuttle... Um the issues that you put there, the mm. infrastructure you're talking about, will that create waves and create further problems for um, uh, homes near those flood waters? You might like to comment on I that, I don't think so. And look, it's only one of, uh, of several options that exist. And, and as the Premier indicated, we're taking expert advice on this as we speak. Uh, the naval um, officers are involved, as well as a marine architect. Uh, so it remains as an option. Um, and, and obviously we need to consider all the options. Commissioner, have there been any confirmed cases of looting? Uh, we had some reports today at Warwick. Uh, and forgive me for this, I'll, I can follow up uh, in relation to this. Uh, there have been some reports at Warwick. Uh, I'm not aware of any actual confirmed cases in the last day or so um, where um, we've, you know, arrested someone in that sense. Uh, everyone would be aware of the matter at Rockhampton where I think the person was sentenced to a term of imprisonment. That was some time ago now. Mm -hmm. I would have to say, in my view, uh, quite clearly, given the, the size and scale of this across the state... Um, that, that the amount of looting has been really, really quite minor, you know, and again, that's a testament to the uh, character, I think, of everyone involved. Can I add to that? Any, sorry, sorry issues in Brisbane as far as... Uh well, no. we're, we're in the middle of it in Brisbane at the moment, yeah. of course. Yeah. But can I add to the Commissioner's comments that when people, it's a hard decision to leave your home, and I understand that people are very worried about what they leave behind. Uh, it's a hard decision for people, or it's very hard for people to worry about their businesses. Just as you saw in the Rockhampton flood, uh, where and in other parts, such as Emerald, we had police boats out and about throughout the night, you will see that in Brisbane. Uh, we will have emo emergency boats and uh, flood boats out and around all of these areas overnight. Uh, so while they're out there to look for people who might be stranded, etc., they'll certainly be keeping an eye on everything. Uh, we are right in the middle of this disaster. These rivers are still rising. Uh, anybody who is out there with that kind of intention will find their own life at risk. Uh, Commissioner McCauley, uh, I'm with National Public Radio in the US. I'm wondering if you could just briefly sum up what you know about the economic impact of the floods. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt that there will be a substantial economic impact to not only Queensland but to the Australian economy. Uh, right across this state, uh, we, are a large, uh, we are a large part of the Australian economy and we're seeing some of our major industries catastrophically affected. The coal industry will take several uh, weeks and in some cases months to get back to full production. The agricultural industry, we've seen a number of sectors lose entire crops and in the case of parts of the cotton industry, uh, they've lost the second crop in a row to floods in the last 12 months. Uh, similarly, we're seeing uh, small businesses uh, that are, make up a large part of our economy flooded, cut off from uh, their markets uh, and uh, that will all take its toll. Uh, probably one of the biggest issues for us, or uh, one of the areas we're focusing on in the recovery and rebuilding effort, is the... Uh, cut to supply lines, uh, the infrastructure that is being, has been damaged that is keeping product from market. So the rail lines and the major arterial highways. Uh, some of those are still covered by water, but we are already in there with engineers assessing them so that when the water is gone, we can have teams in there to repair as quickly as possible. Having said all of that, uh, we believe that uh, we can recover uh, very quickly, and that is our intention. We accept that for many there's a long, slow road but getting our economy back and ticking quickly is one of the first priorities of the task force that is already working on recovery. While we're here in the grip of the emergency in Brisbane, the emergency has passed in a number of these places, water is receding and we are already down the path of recovery and we will continue that as this flood works its way out of the towns and cities of our state. I mean, people will be out of power for, for probably up to days. What's going to happen for those who can't access food or 
Uh, we have now 115,000 properties uh, cut uh, with power cut off. So uh, we will certainly be putting that power back on systematically as soon as we start to see the waters go down. Uh, people uh, who are strand that's why we want people to get out of their home. Evacuation centres have full kitchens and are providing meals to people. Uh, people who are in any risk of being stranded by these floodwaters should make their way out of their homes now and into evacuation centres, uh, making sure that people who unfortunately do get stranded are supplied. It will be one of the tasks of our emergency authorities tomorrow and the next day. While we do expect these waters to hang around for some time, uh, we are only talking about a matter of days, not months, so uh, we are confident that we will have the resources to ensure that people are safe. Premier, there's been a lot of aircraft up around the Lockyer Valley today looking for more survivors. Um, from what we've heard, they haven't found any. Mm -hmm. uh, how demoralising is that for them to put in so much effort in and they're not coming up with it? I think uh, we have uh, out there in our search and rescue teams some very professional people who are very well trained. Uh, they indicated, to, or I was briefed this morning, that this effort might be a two or three day effort before they uh, find uh, either survivors or bodies. So I think they, they know what to expect. They are professional people. Nevertheless, they are people who want to save lives. So yes, it will be uh, very disappointing to them and I'm sure that, uh, that, you know, that they will be doing everything to, at first light tomorrow to redouble their efforts. Uh, we know that they face a pretty emotional time and, but they are very professional people. The Commissioner might like to add some comments uh, in, in that regard, but I just thank everybody out there on our front line, whether they're in the search and rescue, whether they're out there in flood boats tonight, whether they're securing these vessels in the Brisbane River, whether they're staffing evacuation centres, whether they're staffing the, hot the, the uh, emergency call lines. We have people on the call centre 24 hours a day. Uh, every one of these people are just uh, helping to protect uh, both uh, Brisbane and Ipswich. Can you tell us a little bit about the, um, the tale of survival you spoke about earlier today? Do you have any more details about that miracle that you spoke of? No, I've asked our, our media unit, our police media unit, to try and find the details of those two matters. Uh, for those who may not have been here, what was that, that was about was, as you know, uh, within the numbers of people missing, we have a number within that number of people who's, or who we have very grave fears for their safety. Uh, and at the current stage, that number stands at nine. Uh, at one stage it was 18 and now it's down to nine. Uh, but two people have been found who are in that group and those two people were swept away uh, by raging floodwaters. Uh, and our belief was that they had probably been lost and as it turned out they, uh, they survived. Uh, now unfortunately I can't tell you still the detail of how they survived. Uh, we certainly know in other cases people have um, managed to have been swept into a tree and managed to hold onto the tree. Uh, that's one, that one example of what might have happened here. Uh, but it is, they were two remarkable and miraculous stories and as soon as we have the details of those stories, we'll pass them on to you. Mm -hmm. Premier, just, uh, is the water supply for Brisbane assured at this stage for the rest of the season? Yes, uh, we may see some of our water treatment plants uh, out of action. Uh, as a result of this flood, that is, uh, so I'm pleased to say that we are gearing up the Gold Coast desalination plant so that it can operate at full supply uh, should any water treatment plants in Brisbane uh, suffer as a result of the flood. So uh, we are very confident that we will have uh, adequate um, drinking supplies, although the system will be tested because, as I said, we do think that some of the water treatment plants may be affected by the flood. Uh, they will be able to be, uh, you know, repaired as quickly as possible when the waters go down, but in the interim we uh, will be gearing up the Gold Coast desalination plant to supply Brisbane if that is needed. We're seeing several pictures of, of pontoons and boats hitting bridges around, around Brisbane. How safe are our bridges? Um, are they being kept by engineers and will, do any need to be closed? Yeah, I understand that at one stage today, and forgive me if sometimes we just haven't got you know the precise detail because so much is happening across the state, uh, but I understand at one stage today the Goodwill Pedestrian Bridge was closed because of debris that was uh, around the pylons. Whether it's been reopened or not, I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, but um, as the Premier said, the safety of the public is the number one priority. So wherever there is a concern that a bridge might be at risk, 
Um, every step will be taken to ensure that it is not, uh, and that will involve, if need be, the closure of that bridge and the checking of that bridge by engineers to ensure its safety. But so far, and, and you're absolutely right, that the, the sight of the debris sweeping down the Brisbane River is quite an astounding sight. Uh, but so far, I think we've been fortunate, you know, that uh, our main bridges have remained open. Okay, people, thank you very much.